well known to the native Tangva people of the region. The western sycamore tree was one of the few shade trees in the lowlands of coastal Southern California. One of the most famous sycamore trees in our area was known as El Aliso. The trunk of this tree went up 60 feet and its branches spread over 200 feet. It was used as a boundary between properties to delineate where one property began and the other ended. It was used by travelers to know and pinpoint exactly which direction they were headed. And for the native Tongva people, their groups would gather from all over and meet underneath the shade of that tree where they would commune together and confer together. That tree has seen over 400 years of history. Today we're going to open up the Bible. We're going to talk about another sycamore tree that's found in a land far, far away in Palestine, in the city of Jericho, a couple thousand years ago. We're going to read about a fateful meeting between Jesus and a man named Zacchaeus. And we're going to see how his life would be transformed and he would live a new life in the power of God. So as we open up God's word today, let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for meeting with us today. We gather in your name by the power of your spirit. We want to walk away transformed and to know your love for us in a deeper way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you'd like to follow along in the story, you can turn into your Bibles to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Jesus had just healed a blind man and a crowd was following him into Jericho. The word of Jesus must have gone before him. Maybe the teachings he taught, maybe the great words of hope he gave people, probably a lot of the healing stories that were heard and told and retold to others. Whatever it was, as Jesus and this large multitude went into Jericho, there was a man named Zacchaeus who heard about Jesus and he wanted to see him. But there were two obstacles in his way. First, the crowd was really large and he couldn't get to Jesus. And the second, Zacchaeus was a man of small stature. He was short, but he was not short on brains. You see, Zacchaeus saw where Jesus was headed and he ran to that sycamore tree to climb it to get a better view of Jesus. Now, just a short bio or biopic on, on Zacchaeus. The word Zacchaeus, the name Zacchaeus in Hebrew means pure. And Zacchaeus was anything but pure. The Bible tells us that he defrauded people of their money and that's how he became rich. He used his work, his position as a tax collector, and especially as the chief tax collector to gain wealth and position in society. He might have been hated, but he was living the lifestyle of the rich and famous. But this man wanted to see Jesus so bad, he didn't care about his wealthy clothes, his rich robes and garments. He would climb up a tree. He didn't care for his dignity or respect. He wanted to get a view of Jesus. In the Greek word, when he means to look at Jesus, it actually means to behold, to observe, to take into the eyes. It also means to experience someone through the senses. Zacchaeus wanted to experience Jesus for himself. I wonder... What stories he heard about Jesus that inspired him to want to meet Jesus? As the multitude and Jesus drew near, Jesus stopped underneath the shade of that sycamore tree and he looked up and he called Zacchaeus by name. Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for today I must stay at your house. Imagine this. Out of all the people in Jericho, out of all the people who have faithfully followed Jesus, he calls Zacchaeus. Jesus did not call the most righteous person in Jericho. Jesus did not call the most faithful person. He did not call the person who had the most merit badges for providing ministry or service to those in need. Jesus didn't call the most prominent religious leader or the most devout believer. Jesus called a man who lived in sin, defrauding people, a man of ill repute among the masses. And he said, I'm going to your house today. This was a divine appointment. And as I think about divine appointments, I wonder, as the Bible tells us that God has ordained us to walk into good deeds, even before we got there, I wonder, Jesus 
at creation with the Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit, creating light, separating it from darkness, separating the waters from above and the waters below and creating the sky, the firmament, separating the land from the sea, creating plants that give seed and create its own kind and trees and, and the stars and the moon and the sun also and, and the fish and the birds of the sea and the air and, and creating the living things that creep on the earth and man and woman, humanity. And I wonder if Jesus had foreordained that he was going to meet Zacchaeus and have a divine encounter, that generation after generation, that seed would be passed on until maybe, I don't know, Jesus inspired a man or woman to plant that seed at that place of a sycamore tree in Jericho and that it would grow in just a way that it would hold up this short man to be able to see Jesus. I don't know if that's how, how it happened. But what I do know is this, God will lift us up above the obstacles in our lives so that we can see him more clearly. And so when Jesus called Zacchaeus to come down, the miracle here is that Jesus knew Zacchaeus by name. That was supernatural because the Bible doesn't tell us that they had met before. So I wonder if Jesus knew Zacchaeus by name, did he also know his character? Could those eyes of love by the power of the Spirit pierce through the soul of Zacchaeus and know the man for who he was. This is community. To love the other. To know someone for who they truly are and to love them anyway. As I sat in seminary, that was a definition given to us by Lawrence Byrne in a discipleship class. He said, being in community is being known for who you truly are and loved anyway. I I was inspired by that thought, but it really just stayed here intellectually. It wasn't until the last several years of my life that I experienced that personally, where there were men in my life that I took a chance. I acknowledged some struggles and areas of my life that I, I struggled in or that I wasn't sure about or I felt insecure or, or that I didn't do well or that I failed in. And it took courage to be able to open up to them. But my life was being transformed in their loving and accepting presence because they knew me for who I truly was and they loved me anyway. That's the kind of community that we all crave, isn't it? That's the kind of community God calls us to create by His grace. And so what does Zacchaeus do in response to Jesus' invitation that he invited himself to go over to Zacchaeus' house? It said Zacchaeus hurried down. Immediately, he came down the tree. He didn't hesitate. He didn't wait. And it says, he received Jesus gladly. There's a lesson for us. We don't want to wait throughout the whole day before we make time with Jesus. The shade of the sycamore tree reminds us that we need to create space and in our time, in our schedule, where we can meet with Jesus and commune with him, where we can connect with him, and we can experience him in a very special way. What's interesting about Zacchaeus' story is that the, the crowd starts grumbling because they know who Zacchaeus is. They, some of them probably have even been defrauded by Zacchaeus. They're low in their funds because of this man. But Zacchaeus does something that's powerful. He takes an action step. And he says to Jesus these words found in verse 8. And it reads like this. Behold, Lord, half of my possessions I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will give back four times as much. In the presence of Jesus' love and acceptance for who he is, Zacchaeus starts behaving in a new way. In this two-man community that just was formed underneath the shade of that sycamore tree, Zacchaeus is experiencing a transformed life. And he, he now says, I want to make restitution. I want to be able to repay that which I took away. That's what true transformation looks like. It's acknowledging your fraud, your, your sinfulness, how you've manipulated, lied, hurt other people. 
is having the courage to, to share that out publicly with the people around you. And to act on it will transform the life. And I love what Jesus says in response in verses 9 and 10. Jesus says, Today, salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus connects Zacchaeus' story to Abraham's story by saying he too is a son of Abraham. What is he saying? He's saying that, that Zacchaeus is following in the line in the faith of Abraham. The faith of Abraham actually justified him. He was justified by faith. Righteous by faith. We know Abraham's story. If we read through the Old Testament story and witness of him, we know that he messed up a lot more than he got it right with God. He lied twice about his wife being his wife. He actually said to these wealthy rulers and people of influence and power that she was actually his sister. That put her in very dangerous and awkward positions. And it also put the other peoples that received them in precarious positions as well. There's so many times that Abraham did not act in faith. But what he got right, he believed that God would justify him by faith. And here in the story, we have Zacchaeus, who is now living up to his namesake, pure. He is by faith being made whole. By faith, he is being saved. By faith, he is the one who has been lost that has been found by Jesus Christ. I love how Jesus invited himself over Zacchaeus' house. Jesus initiated that moment. He created that divine appointment. It reminds me of another verse in the New Testament that speaks hope to us, that Jesus wants to come to us. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20 reads like this. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will dine with him and he with me. Jesus wants to commune with us. He wants to create community with us. And with that, we have a choice. We can step into that community with Him. And we will be forever changed. As Zacchaeus acted, so you and I can act. A-C-T, act. A, we can acknowledge. We can acknowledge not just the good in our life and celebrate it, but we can acknowledge to Jesus and to those we trust the bad and the ugly of our lives, where we're struggling, where we need help, where we have cares and anxieties. We have the opportunity be, to be and to create a community where we can acknowledge these struggles and find the help and encouragement that we need to find people to journey with us. I am so blessed to have those men in my life that journey with me as I acknowledge the areas where I fall short. It often starts with being real with ourselves and acknowledgement. And sometimes to acknowledge, we need the second step, which is courage. We need to exercise courage. I love the definition that John Wayne gives of courage. He says, courage is facing your fear and saddling up anyway. We have fears. We have concerns. It takes courage to be vulnerable to another person, to let them see who we really are or what we're struggling with in life. It takes a lot of risk because they might reject us. They might not accept us. But better to take a risk and be hurt at times and discover being truly loved, genuinely loved, because we were genuine and authentic and open with others as well. God can heal our wounded hearts and restore us to courage once again. I love that word courage. And I love in Joshua 1.9, where God tells Joshua, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be dismayed. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That promise gives us courage. It gives us courage to live an authentic life and to open ourselves up to other people as well. And thirdly, our third word in act, T, 
transform. In the community of love and acceptance, in a place where we can acknowledge our shortcomings and have the courage to take risks to be vulnerable and to connect with other people and to experience being truly loved for who we are, our lives experience quantum leaps of transformation. I say it's in this kind of community where transformation takes place. Instead of hiding in the shadows, instead of holding on to my shame in secret, instead of carrying the weight of guilt of my behaviors or my struggles or my wickedness, I can come to those I trust and I can say, will you pray with me? Would you walk me in this journey of healing and freedom and transformation? That's the kind of community God wants us to develop. To love the other, who might be different than us in many different ways, but yet wants to know Jesus and be transformed in Him. So my prayer for all of us today is that we will acknowledge what we're struggling with, what we doubt, what we're dealing with, what we're anxious about, where, our, where we keep tripping up in sin, to acknowledge to those that we trust. I pray you'll find those in your life. And I pray God will continue to grow your courage, to be vulnerable, to take a risk, to share who you really are, and to experience being loved for who you are. That just happened to me yesterday on a phone call with a fellow pastor of mine living on the East Coast. I was able to share with him a struggle that I've been having this week, one I'm not proud of. But he listened. He gave words of encouragement. He gave care. And he gave me presence of love and acceptance and prayed with me. I cannot tell you what that means to me in my life. I'm sure you've experienced, and if you haven't, I'm praying that you soon will. And we can create the kind of community where people's lives are transformed. So to that end, I invite you to join me in praying for that. Jesus, thank you for knowing who we truly are and loving and accepting us anyway. May we too invite other men and women into this fellowship with you so they can experience your love and acceptance and they can be transformed. That is my prayer for all of us today. In Jesus' name we say, Amen.